When governments are evil, Christians must oppose them. When rulers make bad laws, Christians must disobey them. So when people say governments are from God, we need to adhere to them. Yes, that's true. Governments are from God, so as everything else. But God, nothing comes out of him but good. So when God established a government, he was intending for the government to protect and preserve the very rights which God gave me, not to dictate how I should live. The government's role is to protect and preserve God-given rights to me, not to be a dictator and impose unjust laws upon me. Definitely that is not of God's. And as Christians, true believers of Jesus Christ, who is the truth, when we see evil laws being passed, we have the right to oppose them and to stand against them and, and denounce them. Why? Because if we truly believe in God, then he, need, he ought to be adhered to more than anyone else on the face of this earth. God is always and ought to be the only sovereign authority over every government, over every human being, and everything that exists. Was St. Peter subject to the governing authorities? Of course, no. Not at all. Instead, he replied, which is right in God's eyes? To listen to you, Sanhedrin, or to him? We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Acts 4, 18 to 20. Wow. So are we going to say, um, St. Peter, you, you've just now broken the law and you've gone against the government? Are we? So who commanded St. Peter to go and preach to the whole nations? Jesus Christ, who is God. He said, no, no, no. God is ought to be listened to more than you. There you go. The Bible is very clear. We respect governments as long as they protect and preserve our rights, not make us slaves. That is not a government that is doing the work of God on earth. It is not. As Christians, we have the right to oppose that. And whatever the cost is, so be it. I'm not going to I'm not going to hide and be hypocrite just in order to please governments I'm here to please my Jesus no one else and if nobody likes that well tough luck with all love I'm saying this believe me Jesus is ought to be respected and honored and worshipped first and foremost then everyone else comes later this perfect God perfect man he is ought to be worshipped He's ought to be adhered to. He's ought to be respected. We, I need to bow before my God. Before I respect anyone else. Now let's talk about silence. When we see church leaders going silent. When we see church leaders, even when they come out and speak, they speak in a very, very weak tone. Um, as if they are begging the government to, you know, please, can you be nice to me? You are not representing your Messiah, my dear friend. Therefore, maybe you are not worthy of that position. Maybe you need to step down and give it to someone who has guts. Yeah? A leader that is coward destroys the country, destroys the church. Jesus Christ will definitely will not choose cowards to be in his kingdom. For Jesus was never coward and never will be. The truth fears nothing. The truth will be always sharper than a sword. But with love. You know what? Love is the most powerful thing on earth. It's the foundation. The problem of our time and age, we have abused this love. 
because we've denied the true divine God. That's why we've abused that love. We've abused it. Let's talk about silence. Let's use heroes of the Christian faith as our examples. John the Baptist was not silent. The Lord Jesus was never silent. Saint Peter was not silent. Saint Paul was not silent. Vocal opposition to the government may do damage to friendship, to family relationships, employment opportunities, and personal freedom. Vocal opposition to, to the government may do damage to friendships, family relationships, employment opportunities, and personal freedom. And aren't we witnessing this in our time and age this very day? My goodness, family members have gone against each other. Are you vaccinated or are you unvaccinated? The vaccinated against the unvaccinated. Look what governments have done. Destroyed family bond, destroyed relationships, made employers go against employees. Yet that employer needs to understand one thing. And I'm saying this to every employer. These employees, you've had them working for you for many years. They were very loyal, my dear friend. How could you force them to take a jab unwillingly? How could you do that to this loyal employee of yours? Ah, oh, because the government told you to do so. And then on the other hand, the government comes out and says, well, there is no federal law in this nation to mandate vaccines. There is no mandatory law in this nation. Well, I just want you, my dear government, to explain to me how come it is not mandatory when you are leaving no choice to that poor employee? How come? You've thrown the buck onto the state government and the state government threw it on the employer. To me, that is weakness from the government and this is not a good leadership. If you are a, a true leader, you better stand up there as a man and speak as a man, even if you're a woman. Have guts and take ownership and responsibility. Don't throw it to the next person and hide away. To me, this is, this is weak. I was going to say something else, but I'll leave it as weak. This is weak. And if anybody says, when you get the jab, you are showing an act of love for your neighbor. Sorry to say this to you. This is a very deceptive way of talking and preaching. And it's a shame to talk as such being Christians. What happened to the first part of the law? Didn't, didn't the Bible teach us all to say that we need to love God first and then neighbor? What happened to the God part? Have we forgotten about that? So is it really to get a jab is an act of love for your neighbor? Where is God? If you don't love God, you can never understand or fathom how to love your neighbor like yourself. Since you and I are, are created in the image and the likeness of God, the only way we're going to understand ourselves when we find our creator. When we begin to love God who created us, then we are then only able to understand and comprehend how to love neighbor as myself. Without God, there is no love. So please stop throwing deceptive statements out there. Read the Holy Bible thoroughly and properly.